So in our previous sessions, we have discussed about timing windows we have seen. So let us once see that particular thing. So this is our clock. Now, so when we were discussing about timing windows, uh, let's say suppose uh, we have a signal A and what we were saying A hash hash. So in this timing windows, we were, uh, let's say if we have uh, one requirement that uh, at uh, passage of clock, my B should be repeated for, uh, my B should be, B can be high for uh, at least two clock cycles. So for modeling this, I'm just using my uh, timing window, zero to two B. That is B can be uh, high for at least two clock cycles and uh, it cannot be asserted also, okay? Because the lower index, uh, lower index is zero. So this particular B, uh, if it is not becoming, if it is not asserting also, no issue. You will not get any error because the lower index is zero. It may be, it may not be uh, become high also. Okay. So any cycle, if it is not becoming high also, this assertion will pass. And if it is high for at least two clock cycles also, this assertion will pass. Now, if we have a requirement, now if we have a requirement that this signal uh, B should be high for at least so this B should be definitely high for two clock cycles. Repeatedly, it should be high. Continuously, it should be high for two clock, two clock cycles. Not like your timing windows, it can be high for one clock cycle, it can be high for two clock cycles, okay? There is no option here. Here, our requirement is our B should be high for, it should be high continuously for two clock cycles, okay? I'm removing this word at least. So our requirement is our signal should be high repeatedly or continuously for uh, two cycles or three cycles or n number of cycles, okay? Uh, so for that requirement, if I use my normal delay operator, how I can write this at the rate passage of clock, my hash one B, hash one B. So after this passage of clock, so B will be high and again in next cycle also B will be high. So here B is high continuously for two number of cycles. Okay. So here B is high continuously for two cycles. Okay. So using this delay operator, we can model this type of requirement, but Without this delay operator, we have one more type of operators which we have, which is known as repetition operators, okay? Now let us try to understand this expression and let us try to see where our assertion is getting passed and where our assertion is getting failed and where our assertion is getting uh, partial success, okay? So at passage of clock, the sampling is happening at the passage of clock, dollar, dollar rows of A that we have already know. What is dollar rows of A? If there is a positive transition, then this particular antecedent will be succeeded, okay? And we are using a non-implication operator and we are using a non-overlapping operator. So the non-overlapping operator, why we are using? So if the antecedent is successful, then in the next cycle, the precedent should be successful. Then we will get a success. But if the antecedent is not success, we are getting a partial success that we already seen in the previous sessions. Now, if there is a positive transition that is from low to high, then we are in the next cycle, we are going to check this particular condition and we have a hash one delay here. So we have a delay also here. That is after two clock cycles, if there is a positive transition, then after two clock cycles, we are going to check for this condition. Now, what is the star operator? The star operator is nothing but our repetition operator. So how we are going to use our repetition operator is variable name followed by star followed by n where n is the number of cycles the uh, particular value should be repeated. It should be high for that many number of cycles or it should be repeated for that number of clock cycles, okay? So this is for n cycles, it should be repeated, okay? So if you are writing B star of two, that means it should be repeated continuously. It should be repeated or it should be continuously high for this many number of cycles, okay? So using this star, we are going to use it. Now, so, and after this, if it is high for three cycles continuously, then in the next cycle, the value of C should be one. Okay. Let me, let me say you the requirement again. So at passage of clock, 
if there is a positive transition then after two clock cycles b should be high continuously for three circles b should be high continuously for three cycles then in the next cycle the value of c should be one okay so then if the c value is one then the assertion will get passed or the assertion will get failed this is our requirement okay so this is the timing diagram which we have now at the first cycle we will get a uh, partial success and at the second cycle the value of a is 1 and in the first cycle the value of a is equal to 0 so that's why the checking will start here dollar start dollar rows of a will be passed here so the assertion will be uh, started here now after two clock cycles that is at this particular cycle <clears throat> because we have non overlapping implication operator and a delay operator so that's why after two clock cycles here the value of b uh, checking of b will be started so the value of b is 1 here 2 here and 3 here it is continuously high for 3 cycles ok so the value of b is continuously high for 3 cycles this also condition has been met then after next cycle then in the next cycle the value of c should be 1 so after one cycle we are going to check for the value of c that is 1 so the assertion will get passed here ok let me repeat this again so we are checking for dollar rows of a so dollar rows of a is where is becoming a high uh, where is where is this condition becoming true here the condition is becoming true so we are going to start the checking here now then after two cycles why after two cycles because i am using a non overlapping implication operator this will include one cycle delay and i am using a normal delay operator so total two uh, two cycles delay we will have so after two cycles we are going to check for the value of b whether it is continuously high for three cycles or not yes it is high continuously for three number of cycles now after this b condition has been met we are going to check for the condition for c then uh, that is after one cycle so after one cycle what is the value of c it is one so that's why the assertion is getting passed now so okay this first checking has been successful then where is the checking happening again at this cycle the checking is happening again so here the assertion checking has been started now so assertion checking has been started next after two cycles one two we are going to check for the value of b the value of b is zero here the value of b is zero so the assertion which has been started here that will immediately fail so this is how the assertion checking is happening in the case of repetition operators and the repetition operators are again divided into three types one is consecutive repetition operators and non-consecutive repetition operator and go to repetition operator so the syntax for your consecutive repetition operator is simply a star n and the syntax for your go to repetition operator the syntax for your non-consecutive repetition operator is equal to n and the syntax for your uh, go to repetition operator is this okay where n indicates the number of cycles now let us try to understand what you mean by consecutive repetition operator non consecutive repetition operator and go to repetition operator the thing which we have discussed now is a consecutive repetition operator so what do you mean by consecutive repetition operator here if you see the assertion is getting failed if the uh, particular value is not repeated consecutively for three cycles let's say if the assertion uh, let's say if the value of b is one here and it is becoming zero and again it is becoming one then also assertion will get failed because the value of b is not high consecutively for three cycles okay here if we are using a consecutive repetition operator that means the value of b should be consecutively in the consecutive cycles it should be high okay so this is how the consecutive repetition operator is going to work so here in the consecutive repetition operator so consecutive repetition operator we can use we can mention the minimum and the maximum value that is this particular value or this particular condition can be high consecutively for this minimum number of cycles to this particular number of cycles for example if we can simply mention a star 2 down to 3 that means this particular value of a 
can be repetitively high for two cycles or it can be continuously high for three cycles. If any of this particular condition has been met, yes, our assertion is good, going to get passed. Now, so how to make this assertion passed? So if I want to make this particular assertion to get passed, here it is getting failed now. So I can use my uh, window here. So how can I use my window? So I will show you. So at passage of clock. Now here I am going to use my timing window. What I have written B star 3. Okay. Now here what I am going to write is B star 0 to 3 and hash hash 1 C. What is this meaning? What is the meaning of this? That means the B, uh, that means B can be 0 also. That is B cannot be asserted also. If the sequence is missing also, this particular condition is being satisfied because the minimum boundary was 0 and the maximum is 3. That is the, the value of B can be absent or the value of B can be high for one cycle or the value of B can be high for continuous two cycles. Continuously it should be high. Okay. And the value of B can be continuously high for three cycles. Let me show one example for this. So in this particular, uh, in this example, which we have seen. So again, same, uh, here the assertion is going to get started and here the assertion is going to get passed. Okay. Which we have started here. It is going to get passed. Now coming to the second assertion, which have been started here, which have been started here. Then after two cycles, we are going to check for the value of B. It is zero and it is not going to get fail it is going to get pass why because our minimum boundary limit was zero so if the uh, sequence is missing also no issue it will get pass okay then after then in the next cycle we are going to check for the value of c here the value of c is zero here the value of c is zero so definitely the assertion is going to get failed if this value of c is one then the assertion is going to get pass now if i am using this particular condition and if i am checking here like let's say suppose if b is 1 for one cycle and it is becoming 0 and again it is becoming 1. So you cannot say uh, b is uh, high for at least two cycles now this assertion should get passed now. No. So this means the b should be high continuously for one cycle or either it should be continuously high. It should be continuously high. Okay. So there should be no uh, d assertion. Okay. If you make this particular value be 0 here and again it is becoming 1, this assertion will get failed here. Okay, it is not going to pass, it is going to fail because the value is not continuously high. Okay, uh, Although we are using our timing operator, that, that doesn't mean that your uh, sequence may be uh, absent and it may be present non-consecutively. No, the sequence should be present consecutively because we are using a consecutive repetition operator. Yes. So that's about your consecutive repetition operators. And uh, we are in our next session, we are going to discuss about non-consecutive and go to repetition operators in detail. So that's all about this session. So if you like this video, please like, share and subscribe to my YouTube channel. All about VLSA. Thank you for watching this video.